Okay, so we're here to uh, preview a game called I Am The Fourth Wall by uh, Slinky Gibbon Games. Uh, making sure it's an L, not a K, because I used to say Stinky Gibbon Games, which is kind of pretty not right. You can find <laughs> that out, right? <laughs> okay, so I Am The Fourth Wall is a, an asymmetric game um, based in the uh, Lovecraftian universe. Uh, I'm going to be taking on the role of the wall, which is meant to be an omnipresent uh, entity that, uh, yes, uh... Smartly of certain games. Let's see, so the wall, where is it? Uh, do, 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 do. Gameplay, the wall, to, okay. anyway, the, no, here's, uh, the wall is, there it is. Uh, the wall is an ancient being of indescribable horror. It, no, it is omnipresent, watching no, in all of the dreamlike state from just behind the veil of the material plane. But now it grows restless. Its intentions for us and our world beyond our no, beyond our comprehension. Mm, I can't think of it. Yes. <laughs> hey. So you guys are going to be playing the investigators. Uh, the investigators were recently ordinary citizens of driving 1950s suburbia. In their own way, they had discovered something amiss, something fundamentally wrong and twisted about the world around them. <coughs> Curiosity caused them to track down other like-minded individuals and band together. Seeking further truths, they have delved deeper into their minds warping. I don't know how much more they'd be warped, so uh, anyway. I don't know uh, there's much left to do. Exactly. Uh, they're seeing formless shapes in the, in the night that might otherwise be deemed paranoia. <coughs> As they teeter on the brink of madness, they find themselves gifted with inhuman abilities, I'm insights to the looking right. glass beyond. It would almost be a blessing if it wasn't for the nauseating feel that sometimes was staring back, unblinking. Staring to the abyss and the abyss stares back. So, oh, event uh, so eventually what's going to happen <coughs> is, well, I'll do that now, um, I'm going to deal two cards to each of you. Yeah. You get to look at them. Uh, you right. will eventually choose one of those cards. You can discuss it amongst yourselves. You can't exchange cards though. You just got to, so you can uh, have a look at the abilities of those. Um, I guess so eventually I will see who they are. Um, but yeah, like I said, you can discuss it amongst yourselves, <coughs> who you've got, where, and what combination you think is the best. Um, from there, oh, that's unique actions. Uh, that is your general actions mm -hmm. uh, that everyone has as an investigator, mm -hmm. and you have a unique action on there. Um, while you're looking at that, if you look in the top right-hand corner, you should see a number, probably a five, but I think there's one of one or a couple, a couple of them are six. That is your oh, yeah. that is your sanity. That also indicates your hand size, maximum hand size. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm I'm looking at I'm looking at yeah. two that have both got a four. So do I. Well, I guess we don't. We just don't have as many marbles to lose. <laughs> I see what they did there. I see what they did you there. You kind of lost your marbles there. But your abilities may actually be really good. Oh yeah. I don't actually understand what they are. But um, this one, I like the same okay, type. so the see? the number, if there is a number, might be a question mark. Uh, within sort of the, the wax seal yes. is how many action no, action costs or action points you need to activate that. Oh, Each, sweet! At the start of your turn, you get two action points. Mm. So you can spend them however you like. Okay. Um, the bit on the <coughs> right <coughs> is your unique action, so mm -hmm. each one obviously is going to be different. And the bo uh, at the bottom is an ex exploit the rift action. Which uh, oh, the I think, which is uh, something you can actually do for one action point. I uh, believe, if I remember correctly, which I'll get to it later, is that if you exploit the rift, you get that do that special ability, but the wall gets an additional action point when it gets to their turn. Mm. Okay. Okay. <coughs> um, so basically, it's a give and take. You do something really good, but you're also giving the wall an extra action point. All right. Okay. So. Probably at this point, it's a good time to ask: search, intervene, and utilize. So I've got <coughs> okay, one ability um, here that is intervene, and one of them that is search. Mine's blitz. Okay, so I'll ex I'll explain those ones so if it may help. I think um, it might. Okay, so the actions you can do: search is to draw a card from the marble deck. 
and put it into your hand. Okay. Okay. Uh, that is one action point normally. Mm -hmm. Intervene. Choose a marble from your hand and place it next to a horror, which is going to be one of these, on the streets. Uh, the marble is now attached to the horror. Uh, you may attach a marble to a horror that, is already, that already has a marble attached to it. And you do that because a, uh, these marbles will also have three different symbols on it. Either science, uh, let me just check that. There's a clue, which is like a little uh, magnifying glass. Yep. A uh, force symbol, which is a gun, and a science symbol, which is a, like a uh, flask. This is sounding more and okay. more like Arkham Horror by the minute. So, but... so to kill <laughs> to kill for horror, you need to have that number or more of each of those symbols. Yep. So that's so you've got to attach those no, the marbles to the um, to the horrors better kill them off. Uh, okay, if there are any intervening instructions on the marble itself, they are resolved as soon as it is attached to the horror. Uh, utilize. You can choose a marble card from your hand that has a utilize instruction and reveal it. Follow the utilize instruction on the card, then discard it. Mm. Uh, unique action, which is whatever's on there. Uh, exploit the rift. You exploit the rift action is described on your card immediately after the exploit the rift add na action. Add a doom token, which is over here. These doom tokens. Mm -hmm. um, add a doom token to the wall's action pool. So in other words, it allows the wall to have an extra action point. Um, okay, give or trade. For a one action point, you may give a marble to another investigator. Mm -hmm. Okay, so actually just give. Or you may trade one marble for another. To You may not take a marble. Mm -hmm. so, so either give or exchange. Never a take. Okay. Okay. Uh, you can try to close a gate, which is for two points, which are only those. Um, those mm -hmm. ones which are going to come back to me eventually. Uh, you can select any number of marbles from your hands uh, that collectively contain at least one of each symbol on the on the force on those gates, um, and then uh, discard them. Any additional symbols are not used and may not be used. Any of the instructions on the card. Then discard the open gate. It is now closed, but the gate can open. The wall can open the gates again. Uh, regroup. If you uh, rotate or basically tap your card. Um, sideways you, re you regroup, and in which case uh, you can they cannot be targeted, or you, no, sorry, uh, let's read that properly. You remain regrouped until the start of your next turn, um, which obviously you must untap. You may then draw two marbles, or draw, uh, you may draw to, or draw marbles until you reach your sanity hand limit. So if you're only down to one card and you've got five or something and you want to replenish your hand, you might want to regroup. Um, if this takes you above your sanity, then you must immediately discard any excess marbles. So if you've got six cards, then yeah, you've got to discard one. Uh, you may now freely give and trade with any other investigators that you or that have also regrouped. Yes. What does blitz mean? A blitz. Uh, that is. Let me just check that. Um, do, 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 do. Blitz. Reveal the, the specified number of cards from the top of the marble deck. This number can be increased. No, it can can be increased by any investigator discarding an adrenaline card, which is one of these, uh, from their hand. Any of these cards that share one or more symbols with those on the <coughs> Blitz may immediately be used to intervene. Uh, as if they had been played from your hand. So basically, rather than drawing it from your hand, you may do it from the deck. Mm. Uh, you may choose the order in which they are played. So basically, you're going to have a group of cards and then you play them. Uh, all other cards are discarded. Okay. Um, so hopefully that is enough information for you guys to choose which investigator to yep. select. Um, now in the solo version... This is a street card. Yep. Um, in the solo version, there's actually five street cards, and the horrors will actually be attached to the streets. Mm -hmm. um, but in the uh, asymmetric version, there's only one street card, which is the Unchained Boulevard. So, just letting you know that. Um, okay. okay, so have you chosen your investigators? Yep. 
Yeah, all other investigators will be just guarded and put back into the box. Okay. Um. I will be the crooner. Mm-hmm. The crooner. Yep. Alright. So what is this ability? Because sure. the no, others may need to know what they are as well. Okay. Intervene. Can you know? Yeah. yeah. So I'll be, so I'll be he's going to find out eventually. Okay, cool. Um, intervene. Ignore the death rattle or of the horror if it is defeated. Okay, so what, what happens with the a horror once it's defeated, um, exactly that. It has a death rattle ability when it gets defeated. Uh, so you can do an intervene. I could intervene. And also by, what was it called? I my exploit unit? the rift. Yep, exploit the rift. You and up to two other investigators may all search or intervene. So basically all of you. Yeah. <laughs> What have you chosen? I am the hunter. I can intervene with a weapon card and I can blitz for eight. Nice. So basically you draw eight cards. <laughs> oh yeah. And which symbol uh, is it? The gun. Guns. Gun. Okay. So power, right. Oh, so it's power, not weapon. Yes. Okay. What's well, the same sort of thing, power weapon? Um, a powerful weapon. I'm on the fence here, help me out. Okay, what are your let's choices? See. Is she the photographer or the professor? First of all, you blitz for five with any of those two symbols. Mm -hmm. um, discard any number of cards, then search that many times. And basically a free redraw. Yeah, from it what is. I'm understanding. And the top one is intervene with a uh, with a uh, clue so card. Clue yeah. card and intervene with two marbles from the discard pile. Hmm. I like the professor. The professor does sound a lot All right. better. <coughs> so I just got the other now one with the we, professor. We're basically just blitzing everything. Yep. Okay. So I'll put them into the uh, box mm -hmm. over here. And then we hear the fires going. Okay. So um, <laughs> so you got the investigators. Now the wall will have these cards in front of you. What I want you to do is someone doesn't matter who. No, someone, someone else. Oh. Just, okay. Let me play. Um, it choose a card from there, and that is going to be. Whoops, I'm I can shuffle. Uh, yes, you can shuffle if you want to. That will eventually be my special power. At the start of the game, I don't get that. Once the time tracker comes up to an eye opens, that card will be turned over, and then we are revealed to everyone. I won't even know what the special power is for now. Can, I, can we see the, the time tracker? What's it? Okay, so the time tracker. Yep. Um, there is a unique one for three, no, three investigators. There's one for four. Five and six. So, the, you know, so you can see if three is quite long, mm -hmm. as it goes more investigators, it comes less. The reason for that, and I'll explain it a bit later when we you know, talk about the schedule. Is it because it's multiple ones? No, it's just uh, because. Multiple players get multiple turns. Yeah, and yeah. multiple turns. The, yeah. the, the, longer the, <coughs> amount, the amount of people that you have, the longer the turns will be. Yeah. Thus, fastens the game. Okay, but in the, I'll, just, I'll explain how the um, turn works. But yeah, no, basically, once it goes around, once around, uh, this will move up. When it gets mm -hmm. to an eye opens, this will get revealed. So yep. all of us will and see that it. Your power. That will become our special power. Uh, once it gets up to the crescendo, any uh, horror that is exhausted will become unexhausted. Um, but once they become exhausted again, <coughs> and I said I'll read this properly again afterwards, uh, once they get exhausted, they can't be unexhausted from this point. Mm. Before that, they can be unexhausted. All right, but so I have to so spend any, any monster that we've defeated basically comes back for round two? No. No? Uh, no. Um, exhausted well, means I've used five. their power. Oh, okay. Okay. So uh, once once they're bit. defeated, they get discarded. Alright. Okay. Uh, once it gets up to the Ancient One Awakens, it means the game's over know. and I have won. Okay. Okay. Um, That's pretty <coughs> Yes. So the, no, no the pressure, game, guys. No pressure. Yes, no, no game. No um, okay, so the game can end in one of three ways. Either you all succeed in closing all the gates, and I'll actually, actually choose another one of these. This will be put onto the side temporarily. Okay, that is a closed gate. That will potentially be opened. This will be set up in a pentagram shape. Uh, if I can figure it out. Yeah, I'll do it. And the last one. Okay. Um, well, there's one, there's only one card that's not there, but... Yeah, it's one, that's going to be that one. Okay. Okay, so these are the open gates. It's your role to close them off. Now, if at the moment, if I'm able to open the fifth gate and complete that pentagram, yes, it's not game over <coughs> just yet until Time Tracker gets to an eye opens. 
Mm. Okay. So in the first three rounds from slumber and the next two rounds, you're you, safe. Yeah, you're safe. You have a bit of reprieve there. But if you but open all of the gates if, yeah. on that fourth turn, you well, win. Well, if if it's on that third turn and five gates are open, and then we progress to start, no, the um, time tracker. Game over. Or if there's four open, and sometime after an eye opens, the fifth, the fifth opens, one is, yep. then, then uh, game over. So as long as an eye opens or after, there's five gates open, game over. I've won. Mm. As I said, also if you get to an ancient one awakens, game over. Game over. Okay. Well, yeah, no, no, no pressure. Well, yeah, no so pressure. None. Okay, so I'll put that up None there for now. Um, okay. So, uh, we've done that. Uh, so, you meant to go to cards. Okay, the marble cards. Um, they have an example here of the first aid kits. You're guessing you can look at the bottom card or something like that. As well. Well, just well, just we, we don't right. know what the cards are, yeah, so you can it. probably get away with just pulling the one on just, one yeah, off the pull, bottom or in well, the middle. Pull the bottom one. Doesn't matter. Hey. So, you got the metal detector. So, the <laughs> symbols on the side here are what you're going to be using to either close the gates or to uh, kill the horrors. Okay, and I'll put this horror, that's street card here. Um, obviously the top of it is the name, and the bottom is the, if you have to utilize it, the instructions are there. Um, it says, marbles are items that are anything from guns to hats to vials of suspicious liquids. Investigators cling to these petty objects as a grounding to the material world and their sanity. And by the way, I found, find it kind of funny that one of these marbles is a priest. <laughs> so you can <laughs> you, you can to cling priest. to the priest. Father, oh, okay. save me! <laughs> Familiarity yes, is key son. to holding out against the horrors of one's uh, uh, mutating perception of the world. However, these mundane items also prove to be useful in ingenious situations as investigators attempt to stave off the onslaught of unspeakable happenings on the streets outside. But parting with these items poses a grave risk. The fewer marbles an investigator has, the closer they are to drinking tea with the March Hare. With the what? <laughs> March Hare. March Hare from the uh, Alice in Wonderland. Oh yeah, okay. Your okay. Man has a hat so what? No, could what happens ah. is, as we mentioned before, this also represents your sanity. If you run out of cards in your hand, you become insane. You become out of the game for until the next round to get back to you. And then you got to draw a new investigator. So I can basically, if I lose all my sunny, I can run around basically naked, going crazy, and then the next round I'm, I'm back highly and recommending so that. Sort of, but do that. But you might not want to go insane because it gives the wall added bonuses. Oh yeah. Okay. What what does the wall um, get out okay. of seeing someone insane? Now what? Now one of the things I was thinking of is that with the marbles, when you're trying to attack the the horrors, I can just imagine you like throwing objects at horrors. But I'm just thinking about the it priest. Just you pick up the priest and say, <laughs> <laughs> Father, help me! What shall what? I do, my son? Oh, yes. why are you throwing me? <laughs> okay, Forgive so. Forgive me, Father, but I am about to sin. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm guessing first play is going to be you. Um, sure. Since we're going around, around here. Uh, second player, third player. So what's going to happen is the wall's going to have their first turn. That's going to be player one. Wall, player two, wall, player three. Time tracker moves on. Wall player one, two, three, move on. Okay? Mm. So between every single person's turn, there's a wall's turn. Okay. okay? And when it gets to the en end of your turn, mm -hmm. we're going to move the tracker up one. Okay. Okay? Um, so that is how that works. Now, for my actions, um, let's see. Oh, okay, no, the, yeah, the, no, the time tracker, I'll talk about the time tracker part. So the slumber, which is the first three uh, stages in on this particular one. Obviously, more investigators, the shorter it is. Mm -hmm. uh, this, the slumber section is um, make make sure you choose. No, that's where it starts. So basically, nothing really happens there. So you're all pretty safe. When it gets to an eye opens, um, the wall card is turned face up, revealing the identity of the card to the investigators. The wall may now use a unique action and the aura ability stated on the card. Mm. Okay. Um, some of the abilities will also give me access to these tokens, which I can actually then place onto horrors, making it harder to defeat. Okay. 
Um, the crescendo, which is into the red area. The crescendo is the final rounds of the game where the stakes are at their highest. All horrors on the streets, which will be these ones, become no longer drained. So they become undrained. The wall may not take a brood turn during the crescendo, which I'll explain what the brood action is later. And then when it gets to the end one, uh, awakens, that's the end of the game. Mm -hmm. um, so on my turn, I have uh, five, five different actions I can do for now, and obviously I can take up actions here. First one is Delve. I can draw a card from the horror deck and put it into my hand. Uh, there are no limits to the number of cards you know, I may have in my hand, whereas you guys have a limit of whatever your sanity is. Mm -hmm. um, play, I can manifest a horror. I can place a horror from my hand onto the table in front of me. I'll just mm -hmm. put it up there for, for my easy use. Uh, the horror is now considered to be on the streets. Each horror has their manifest cost listed in the top left hand corner. So, however many, whatever the manifest is, how many, how many action points I need to summon it. So they're on the streets, so they're horroring themselves Yes, they're up there, yes, they are horroring <laughs> Just themselves your out. common street bills. <laughs> <laughs> hey there, um, investigator, I, come I can, to my place. <laughs> Do you see something insane? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll leave, give up my bubbles for that. Um, I can destroy a marble. Right, moving along. <laughs> I can destroy a marble, um, so if there is a... Um, any marble is attached to the streets because there are some with anchors on there. Like a priest is actually an anchor, I think, and there's like a beretta. Wait. Think. So if the oh. priest is an anchor, how are you supposed to throw the priest? Oh, actually, I don't, actually, actually, I don't think the priest is anchored. But one, there's there's a few items that have a little anchor symbol next to it, which means I have to get attached to the street and stay around. They don't get discarded after use. No, oh. I'm imagining okay. I'm leashed to a pole, waiting. <laughs> no, I'm just thinking you'd have to buy a trebuchet and just. <laughs> oh. um, so I can use I can use an action terrible. point. So I can use an action point to get rid of a marble either first attached to the street or attached to one of the horrors. Mm. Um, I can use the unique action that's stated on this card, or I can trigger a horror's ability, but I have to drain it first. Um, oh yeah, so that, those are all. I can choose Roth, which is this. I can do any of these as long as I've got action points. The other thing I can do instead of Wrath is to do a Brood instead. If I choose to Brood, I can add a Doom token to my action pool. Um, then I undrain all the horrors, so that's the only way I can un no, bring them back again, is to Brood. Um, <laughs> and then I can unleash the Scourge, uh, which, which is up here. There's a description of what it does. So the, the Scourge Scourge. on this one says, no, Investigators may not use... Brooding. Brings all the women to the yard. <laughs> So, uh, with this Unchained Boulevard Scourge, investigators may not use the closed gate action while there is a horror at Unchained Boulevard. Oh. So basically, if I put a horror on here, I can use the Broods to Brood and say, yep, I'm going to do the Scourge, and that means you can't close the gate until you get rid of that one. So you're bringing all the girls to the yard? Yes, I am. Okay. That would, that um, would explain why it can't be done on a crescendo, is so that you can't just continually block us from closing gates? Exactly. Um... <clears throat> If, uh, yeah, but basically, because if you undrain them, and then, yeah, the crescendo means that I can't do a brood anymore, so, I think. So, okay. once they're trained, that's it on, yeah. them, on the monster? Exactly, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I mean I, my role is trying to get as many horrors out as possible, so I can use their abilities during the crescendo. And also annoy the crap out of you guys. Um, oh, you do that normally? Yes. <laughs> that's something new. So, if the Scourge is uh, defeated, or otherwise no longer on the streets, which is obviously the uh, monster, uh, then the Scourge card is set aside and the investigators may then close gates. Uh, end of turn, when you take a brood turn you may keep any unspent doom in your action pool because normally at the end of my turn all the action points are gone. Mm. Okay, um, let's see, the wall turn over watch, that's the cold version. Okay, not worry about that for a moment. So yeah, basically that's what I can do. I can either choose to um, do the Wrath, which is take action points, or to Brood is to un untap all the horrors. Um, or and Wrath. Or Wrath. A Wrath. Um, and also to um, get extra, uh, extra wrath, action points. Wrath, potato, potato. Yeah. Um, tomato, tomato. So I've done that. that. Yeah. Okay, so yes, if you... Your hand, as I said, your hand limit is, and your hand sanity is based on your card there, so you've got to discard down to that. 
Um, if you're going insane, at the end of any action, doesn't matter whose action it is, if an investigator has no cards in their hand, they have been driven insane. Investigators can even drive themselves insane by playing their last marvel. <laughs> so you may want to actually do that, I don't know, if there is a good strategy for it. I, obviously we don't have strategies yet, but <coughs> there may be a strategy for it. Mm. Um, yeah. Although this is ill-advised. If you if you have got insane, turn your investigator card upside or face down to represent your insanity. Uh, while you are insane, you cannot be the target, and will not other no, will other will otherwise not act, interact with the game until your next turn. Mm. Okay, so yeah, basically you're out of the game until your next turn. Uh, if you're driven insane during your turn, your turn immediate, in, immediately ends. Kind of logical. Uh, when an investigator goes insane, the wall must open a gate. Mm. Oh, that's bad. Yes. Yeah. So, if you <coughs> think you can yeah. close the gate on the next person's turn, you may want to do that. Who knows? Okay, yeah. um, if you are insane at the start of your turn, you must take a new investigator card at random from the investigator deck and draw marbles equal to their sanity. Then shuffle the insane investigator back into the investigator deck. So basically, yeah, you're going to get a new investigator and then you're going to shuffle that back in. Mm -hmm. Um... Okay, so opening the gate. There are multiple ways the wall can open a gate. This is usually done by driving investigators insane or sacrificing cultists. In the horror deck, there are quite a few cultists, so I can sacrifice them to open a gate up. Uh, to open a gate, take, no, take an unused wall card and place it face down. So basically, boink, mm -hmm. uh, lining up the pentagram. Their formation on the back of the cards. If there is already five gates and you have not yet reached an eye open on the time tracker, then the wall may instead place a doom token in the action pool to use on your next turn. So I can continue opening up more, but yeah, mm -hmm. basically it's that. On, uh, if the fifth gate opens after the eye is open, uh, then the wall has achieved victory, the game ends, and the world is plunged into perpetual madness. Mm, that like, yeah, I think it's already mad in you, but anyway. I was say, I don't know there's much left to do, but... Um, if the horror or marble deck ever runs out, shuffle their respective discard piles and make a new deck. Uh, defeating a horror. Each clue, force, and science symbol on the marble attached to a horror negates a symbol of that type on fr uh, from the defeat cost of the horror. If a horror has all of its symbols negated, then it has been defeated. Any additional symbols do nothing. When a horror is defeated, follow its death rattle instructions, if any, then discard the horror and all marbles attached to it. If the horror wa uh, was the scourge, then set aside the Unchained Boulevard card. It does not automatically get attached to something else. So, yes. Um, the, other, the, the order of things. Sometimes several things appear to happen at once. That is mostly seen after defeating a horror. When this is the case always resolve the marble instruction before the death rattle of a horror. Okay. Okay. Um, the card instructions are pretty much straightforward. If we need to, we can refer to that. And we yeah. have common terms and phrases. Yep. Cool. Um, so I need to make sure to see if I start with a number of cards. Let me just check I that. I think we start with a number of cards as well. Yep. So draw up to your sanity cards. Cool. That was like around 20 minutes <laughs> already. <Yep. laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how long. That's how long. <laughs> how long uh, have you been asleep for? Uh, last time I checked, it was about oh ten minutes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I built the wall. So remember. Yours. Yep. Four for me. Four for Mizu. And I get five. You get five. Well, we can look at these cards, right? right? Yes, you can. <clears throat> um. Let's see how I'm gonna lose. It. Fuck me. No. Wow. Okay. Oh, some of them just don't have anything on them, and you could use them just to close the gates. <laughs> what was that? Nothing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Which well, seems a little bit redundant. Deal a wall type with the wall, and place down, place all the time track with the side. Don't worry, it has a sign. Oh, the wall, the I'm, okay, and so I may this. look at the face of the wall card, mm -hmm. so I'm, I can look at this. I've seen the sign. So I can pre uh, I can plan for this. See what you did there. Um. Oh, okay. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, so you arrange for this kind of yeah. down to fashion. This will cover the gate. So the gate can look up those five minutes. The wall then draws five horrors. Okay, so I start with five. Okay, so let's try this out. So one, two, three. 
three, four, <coughs> five. Now I believe, let me just check that, I think I have uh, two actions. It says on there. Uh, but each doom grants you one action point to spend. It doesn't say, yeah, it doesn't say what, no, how many you start with each turn. I think it's two. Mm. Let me just check that. Um, Okay, and also the brood cannot be done on the very first turn or during the crescendo. So that's what I think I said before. So basically I can't uh, undrain those things. Um, add one Doom token to your action pool. So I get one action. But if it's my first turn, then I get two instead. Okay. Um,